John Nash Ott was a successful banker by day and a dedicated scientist and photographer by night. Articles by Yokel and Groark describe Ott's countless successes and contributions to different communities. He made an impact in the scientific community for his research on the effect of different colors and types of light on the health of plants, animals, and humans, the medical field for his time-lapse microphotography of cells, including cancer cells, the television industry, where he was the host of a popular gardening television show entitled How Does Your Garden Grow in the 1950s, and a collaborator with Walt Disney on classic documentaries such as Secrets of Life, released in 1956. According to Reming, time-lapse is the exact opposite of slow motion. Instead of viewing a certain process for a longer time than normal, as in a slow-mo, the time-lapse shows a process that takes days, weeks, or even years in just a few minutes. Ott himself describes the principle of time-lapse in his book, My Ivory Cellar, published in 1958. He compares the process of creating a time-lapse film to the process of creating animated cartoons, only instead of drawing individual frames, the subject is photographed at different time intervals, all of which vary depending on the process being studied. John Ott was most interested in photographing flowers, plants, and other living things. He performed countless experiments using plants in his personal greenhouse, taking photographs of these growing subjects as slight amounts of growth occurred. He even invented various pieces of photographic and lighting equipment that would automatically go off at set intervals so as to make the conditions as congruent as possible for every photo that was taken. Ott changed the temperature, lighting, and moisture around the plants to observe and document their results. He detailed his accomplishments in his book as well. As he continued his amateur research, according to Mother Earth News, Ott became fascinated with the possible link between plant growth and light waves. He continued experimenting with light and plants and then moved on to experimenting with animals. Loyola University was so impressed with Ott's results that they awarded him an honorary doctorate degree, even though he did not continue his formal education after graduating from high school. Ott's time-lapse projects were very time-consuming, some taking several months or even years. Ott's film showed the blooming process of a plant that was nothing more than a bud into a beautiful, full bloom. Ott often featured original music scores performed especially for his films by orchestras. Ott even found time to create Ott Light Technologies in 1989 to market his one-of-a-kind natural sunlight light bulb. Ott Light is still around today and has greatly expanded. After his return home from two years in the U.S. Navy during World War II, he quit his day job at the bank and devoted all his time to creating educational time-lapse films. I plan to do an homage to Ott to make a time-lapse film of my own. I wanted it to document some sort of natural process, but due to time restrictions, I decided not to do time-lapse of a plant, as Ott would most likely have done. Instead, I decided to document the process of ice cream melting. My plan was to buy a pint of ice cream and photograph it with my iPhone every 30 seconds until it was completely melted. I tried to maintain a consistent angle and distance from the ice cream, but it was impossible. I used the stopwatch function on another iPhone to time the 30 second intervals. At the end of each interval, I snapped a picture of the ice cream. This process took about two hours and I took about 200 photographs. After the ice cream was melted and all of my photographs were taken, I put them all together and added music. In retrospect, I see many ways in which this experiment could have been improved. There were many inconsistencies in my experimental method, which were noticeable in the final product. I tried my best to maintain the same lighting, distance, and angle for each photo, but I failed to keep all of them the same. I believe that nearly all of these inconsistencies would have been minimized if I had used a tripod and a different camera. In the future, I will make better preparations for experiments of this type. Ott's first attempt at time-lapse photography was during his high school years, and his subject was an apple blossom. He took pictures at regular intervals, but often missed the alarms he had set and was unaware of how often he should photograph the plant. He attempted to photograph the blossom at regular intervals to document its budding process. 
This experiment was filled with inconsistencies, and in the end, the result was disappointing. Although this first experiment failed, Ott learned that it was necessary to take pictures much more often and over a longer time frame to show the growth of the plant. Ott's first experiment seems similar to my own. Although the final product did not turn out as I hoped, creating this time-lapse video was definitely a learning experience.